the data bus in the lower right hand corner of the M1 is where you're going to connect your, your keypads, your input expanders, your output expanders, your supervised power supplies, and a serial port expander. All those are, are data bus devices. The M1 can, can accept no more than two home runs connected to the main board. Um, if you're using four conductor, for instance, you could daisy chain devices together like we have in our diagram here and you can connect uh, daisy chaining making sure that the last device would get terminated now because we actually are using an, a 485 data bus which is communicating at 38,400 baud rate there's some special wiring configuration requirements that must be uh, followed. One is the no more than two home runs. The other is to make sure that the end of each home run is properly terminated and we do that by using a black jumper included in the hardware kit to engage a 120 ohm resistor. So at the uh, at both ends there would be 120 ohm resistor at both ends so the overall resistance across the data bus A and B should be between 60 and 70 ohms something in that range and also the overall length of the data bus should not exceed 4,000 feet so if we're starting at the M1 and we're home running uh, let's say for instance in our example down here we have our two home runs uh, each one of these home runs could be no more than 2,000 feet apiece for a total of 4,000 feet. Because we have the two home runs, the last device, in this case an input expander and a keypad, would have the terminating jumpers installed to engage those 120 ohm resistors. If I had only a single home run, let's say for instance this bottom uh, home run did not exist, then my terminating jumper would be actually on the M1 and on the last device on that single home run. So there should always be two terminating resistors on the M1 system. Now we offer a couple different means to wire the data bus. We offer a data bus hub, the M1 DBH. This is for new installations. And this uses a CAT5 or a CAT6 wiring, uh, which you would go from the hub to the device. You would terminate the home run at the DBH using an RJ45. And what this does is this now, this hub does the daisy chaining for you. Um, depending on the installer, some have no problem daisy chaining devices. A lot of installers like to home run back to the control, so I would suggest the DBH hub, in which case and you can terminate each home run. Now because this, the hub is doing the daisy chaining for you, it's bringing a return path back to the control. So therefore we have to calculate each home run now double because of the return path. But the DBH hub makes for a nice, neat, clean installation. And if you need, this one here has nine ports. If you need additional hubs, you can daisy chain them together, or you could have two of them in parallel, because uh, that would still be considered two home runs coming off the control. And instead of terminating the device, we offer a terminating plug. It's an RJ45 plug that has the resistor built into it. All right, let's talk about wiring for the DBH. Right now we're looking at, uh, let's say for instance, this is a keypad. We have our wiring harness off of our keypad. This is about a six inch wiring harness. You would home run your CAT5 from the DBH all the way to the device. You would make these wiring connections, the brown wires for power. We have our orange and our green for data A. We have white orange and white green for data B. And you can see here how the these would connect inside the RJ45. This is using uh, 568A wiring configuration. 
So we have a return path. We have the data going out to the keypad and then back to the DBH so that it can go out onto the next available port to another device. So this is how we would wire for the M1 DBH hub. Another means of wiring for the M1's data bus is the M1 DBHR for retrofit. So if you have an existing system that, that you're going to replace with an M1, but it has multiple four-wire home runs back, you can use the retrofit hub, which will then, um, it's an active hub. So each one of these branches here is its own 485 data bus, and therefore each one must be configured using the 485 data bus parameter, so no more than two home runs per branch. Each branch would need to be pop, uh, properly terminated, and its control must be termi uh, terminated properly as well. Now, because this is an active hub, there's a lot and a lot of uh, information being passed back and forth across these branches, so it's very, very, very important to make sure that the DBHR is located as close to the control as possible. You can have a maximum of two DBHRs on one system. Both of them would have to be at the control, and it is not, absolutely not possible to connect a DBHR to a branch of another one. So, so definitely not uh, try to do that. We now have an example here where we have the M1 main control, and then we have a single home run which we've daisy chained two keypads together. The last device on the home run would receive the terminating jumper, as well as the control itself. That's the JP3 spot on the M1 gold. We now have two home runs coming off the control. So we have a four conductor, which we daisy chained two keypads together. And now we have a four conductor where we're daisy chaining some input expanders. Terminating jumper on the last device of each home run. So in this case, we have our hub. And we have multiple devices, home run, back to the hub, and each one of them is terminated with an RJ45, which the DBH hub is daisy chaining these devices together for us. The first unused port on the hub would have the terminating plug installed here, and because it's only one home run going out, JP3 on the control would be terminated. Now in this example, we're going to use our retrofit hub, which must be located as close to the control as possible. Okay, let's take a look at the green check marks. This is where the terminating jumpers would be installed. Now the reason we have A and B is because we have a single home run going from the M1 to the retrofit hub. If we look at branch one, it's a single home run. So the last device gets terminated as well as the branch, that's JP2. Remember, these are active branches, so, so each one is its own unique 485 data bus. Branch 2 has two home runs coming off of it, so we terminate each device, but not the branch itself. Branch 3 follows that same scenario, two home runs. This home run actually has two devices daisy chained together, so the last device is terminated on each home run, but not the branch itself. Lastly, branch four, it's a single home run, so the device is terminated as well as the branch. So it may look a little confusing, but uh, we've got some great documentation to explain that with inside the M1 DBHR installation manual. You can always contact us if you have any questions at all.